Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Washington Gun Law TV. I am Washington Gun Law President William Kirk. Thanks for joining us. Hey, it might be obvious to you, but in case you haven't figured it out, yes, we are coming to you from our central Washington location right here in beautiful Clear Ellum, Washington. Hey, listen, we've had a bloodbath of a legislative session going on. We've been all spun up about that. We've been all spun up about the pistol brace rule, but we know there's a lot of important case law out there dealing with assault weapons and magazine bans that may significantly affect the future of our Second Amendment rights here in Washington State, as well as nations. Nationwide. Well, there is a magazine ban case that hasn't gotten a lot of attention, and they're asking for a remedy that I think we really ought to talk about because it's a case that we ought to probably put on our radar. So today, let's spend a few minutes and talk about the magazine ban case that no one is talking about. Okay, before we get going too far down this road, want to thank the source of today's material. That is Rob Romano. Going to put his little Twitter handle right down there for you. For those of you who want to stay up to the minute about what's going on around the country with 2A litigation, I suggest you follow Mr. Romano. Okay, the case we're talking about today is a case called Weiss or Wise v. Bonta. Yes, it is another Bonta case. Yes, it is another California case. And this is actually the first challenge to California's high-capacity magazine ban. Don't believe me? Well, Duncan v. Bonta, which at the time it was filed was actually called Duncan v. Becerra, was filed on May 17th of 2017. This case, Wise v. Bonta, was actually filed on April 28, 2017. Now, in addition to the really unique remedy, which we're going to talk about in a second, Plaintiffs here very correctly sum up the state of law and state of this case as what the Supreme Court applied in Bruin is precisely the theory plaintiffs here have advanced since this case was filed on April 28, 2017. Despite California's apparent legislative policy preferences and animus towards Second Amendment rights, and by extension those who would lawfully seek to assert and exercise them, the enshrinement of constitutional rights necessarily takes certain policy choices off the table. Indeed, the Supreme Court expressly rejected the argument that the scope of the Second Amendment right should be determined by judicial interest balancing. The conduct that plaintiffs wish to engage in, keeping and bearing arms, is covered by the plain text of the Second Amendment. Accordingly, it is the government's burden to demonstrate that its laws are consistent with the nation's historical tradition of firearm regulation, that it cannot do. Now, here's the most interesting thing, okay? They are not asking for an injunction on this law. What they are asking for is a summary judgment. Now, without getting too far into the woods and geeking out too far, what a summary judgment basically says is, hey, you know what, court? There's really no material dispute about what the facts of this case are. There really is no material dispute as to what the state of the law is. And because there is no disputing what the facts or the law is, you might as well just go ahead and rule in our favor because both the facts and the law are in our favor. Now, it is an extraordinary remedy, but it is a remedy which is oftentimes granted. Now, just to give you a brief overview of the case law, in order to establish and win a summary judgment motion, plaintiffs have to prove summary judgment is appropriate when, viewing the evidence in the light most favorable to the non-moving party, there is no genuine dispute as to any material fact. And so what the plaintiffs are saying here is, hey, listen, you know what? Even if you give the government the most expansive interpretation, the most creative interpretation that they can come up with, you know what? The facts and the law are still on the plaintiff's side. Therefore, let's just cut to the chase. Let's rule in favor of the plaintiffs and let's rule California's magazine ban law to be unconstitutional. Now listen, there are multiple challenges and they're asking for a summary judgment determination on all of these challenges. Number one, that of course the magazine ban violates the plain text of the Second Amendment, which it clearly does. Second is, is that the magazine ban violates the common use test as it's established in, by Justice Scalia in District of Columbia v. Heller, which is that the only historical tradition we have of ever allowing regulations of firearms or firearm components are those which are deemed dangerous and unusual. Standard capacity magazines are neither dangerous and they are certainly not unusual. Therefore, it would fail when analyzed under the common use test. The third, of course, is that there is no historical analog to justify banning magazines. And the reason that the plaintiffs are arguing that is, in fact, there is no historical analog to justify the banning of magazines. The first magazine bans ever kicked around in the United States, shockingly, were in California. And I believe that was in the late 1980s. 
Another argument, and I love this argument, is when they're saying, hey, this violates the takings clause, which is they're not necessarily under a Fifth Amendment standard challenging whether or not California had the right to ban the magazines, but they're saying, hey, if you banned them and therefore you took my property and you didn't give me any compensation, that's a violation of the Fifth Amendment. And it is, in fact, a violation of the Fifth Amendment's protection against unconstitutional takings. Okay, so the case, once again, is Weez v. Bonta. It's filed in the United States District Court for the Eastern District of California in Sacramento. The motion is in for summary judgment. We'll put the links for the court listener docket down below so you too can read the pleadings and follow this case. This is a case we need to be very careful about because if there is a ruling in favor of the plaintiffs here, they could essentially be beating Judge Benitez to the punch on the Duncan v. Bonta matter, which we are all so carefully watching. Listen, in the meantime, if you guys have any questions about any of this or what's left of our Second Amendment rights, you guys should know how to contact Washington Gun Law by now. But if you don't, hey, all of that information is in the description box down below. In the meantime, I want all of you to remember that part of being the lawful and responsible gun owner, like we talk about all the time here at Washington Gun Law, is to know what the law is in every situation and how it applies to you in any instance that you may find yourself. Until next time, thanks for watching and stay safe.